As a driving enthusiast, when I think of the term hot hatch, a picture of a Volkswagen GTI quickly comes to mind. This has been known as the quintessential hot hatch for years. In fact, here in America, it's now been around for about 40 years. And last year, VW gave us an all new version of the GTI known internally as the Mark 8. It got more aggressive, tech heavy styling, and it got more power underneath the hood, and it got an all new interior with some new tech features that was taken directly out of the all electric Volkswagen ID4. Now, I've already had a chance to drive the GTI on a press launch about a year ago. However, this week, as you can see, VW has loaned us this 2023 GTI Autobahn equipped with the six speed manual transmission. Arguably, this is the spec that I would choose for myself, especially in this King's Red Metallic. However, in this video, we're gonna live with the GTI. We're gonna put it through our usual battery of tests. And at the end of this review, we're gonna find out, does the 2023 GTI still represent the best in the segment? If you guys are looking for a hot hatch, stay tuned to find out. Now, because this is a GTI, which is technically the only way that you can buy a Golf in the US or the Golf and the, or the GTI and the Golf R, let me go ahead and pop the hood and show you guys what's powering the latest version of the GTI. Now, like any other good hot hatch, VW has increased the power this year, which should keep enthusiasts coming back to the Volkswagen brand. Now underneath this hood, which I want to point out is very heavy and is held by a prop rod, which is very much cost cutting in Volkswagen sense, because usually this vehicle has uh, struts. And I also noticed there's a lot of overspray and just an unpainted, unfinished area here underneath the hood. Although when you do, when they did that, you can see there's kind of like an interesting reddish black color underneath here. Uh, and you also notice the engine itself isn't very pretty. That's because there is no engine cover on this car. You can see there's actual like mounts and holes for where they could put a plastic cover here to kind of minimize vibration, for example. But for some reason here in America, we don't have that. But regardless of the way it looks, this engine is, is known as the EA888 Evo 4. So I believe it's now in its fourth generation of this powertrain. It's a two liter double overhead cam, direct injection TFS or TF, TSI turbocharged four cylinder with a max boost pressure set to around 26.1 PSI. So Volkswagen really turned up the wick on the boost pressure. It now makes 241 horsepower and 273 foot pounds of torque. That's an increase of around 13 horsepower versus the prior generation. Uh, and it makes the GTI definitely one of the quicker options, but definitely not the most powerful option. Its power is roughly split between the Honda Civic Si or the Acura Integra and the Hyundai Elantra N. Uh, you get it only front wheel drive. If you want all wheel drive, Volkswagen will happily sell you a Golf R for around $15,000 extra. Uh, thankfully, their electronic limited slip differential known as VAQ uh, is standard equipment on all GTIs. That's gonna help put the power down, especially when you have this much torque. You get a choice between either a six speed manual like my test car or for $900 extra, Volkswagen will sell you their lovely seven speed dual clutch transmission with launch control. That is going to be the quicker and more fuel efficient option. This model here is rated at 23 in the city, 32 on the highway. It goes up by one or two MPG with the automatic. Uh, and uh, this car should get to 60 in the uh, six second range. The dual clutch is gonna be quicker by about a half a second. Um, fuel economy, like I mentioned earlier, uh, is 23.32, but thankfully this year, Volkswagen says you can actually run this car happily on regular gas. You don't even have to put premium in it. It has a top speed of just shy of 130 miles an hour, and the GTI is still pretty light by hot hatch standards. As this car sits, it weighs in at just over 3,100 pounds. But closing that heavy hood, let's talk about the exterior styling of this vehicle, which I personally think this car is very attractive. It definitely got a little bit of flack from some uh, loyalists for having a very tech heavy, kind of droopy look to the front end. The beauty about the GTI uh, and the Golf R is how narrow and small this car actually is. It's still very small by hot hatch standards. It's overall width is like 70.8 inches compared to like uh, 73, like on most hot hatches, this is actually relatively narrow and easy to drive. The uh, styling of this car, you can see the hood has these two sculpted lines uh, in them. The headlights are gonna be standard full LEDs with adaptive LEDs, uh, with LED daytime running lights, LED low and high beams. And then all of them also come standard with these uh, LED fog lights, which again are 
comprised of five individual LEDs that kind of make an X shape that's nicely integrated into the honeycomb pattern of the grill. You can see the upper grill has this signature red line that goes across the front of the vehicle with the Volkswagen logo. There's also lit up LED elements underneath the red lines. If you guys go for the SE and up trims, there's also a red GTI badge here. I kind of wish the Volkswagen emblem lit up as well. You can get that on some vehicles like the ID4, but on the GTI, you just kind of get that red line with the LED uh, daytime running lights and turn signals. It's a very attractive car, especially in this King's Red Metallic. It's an extra $500 for this color, uh, and it definitely makes this car stand out in a very good way. Now, the GTI continues to be built off of the MQB architecture, so it's just been thoroughly revised. VW says it's about 15% stiffer in torsional rigidity versus the Mark 7, uh, and this vehicle at 168.8 inches long is very small, actually, by hot hatch standards or by compact standards. This vehicle, in fact, is actually five inches shorter than a Toyota Corolla, a GR Corolla even. Uh, it has a 103.9 inch wheelbase, so small wheelbase. So it's a small car compared to something like the Honda Civic Si. Now looking at the wheels, you can see the Autobahn package gives you these very attractive 19 inch wheels wrapped in a 235 35 R19 Goodyear summer tire. Now these summer tires are gonna give us that extra grip. If you guys go for a baser trim, you'll have an 18 inch wheel on a 225 inch uh, tire. Uh, the new 40th anniversary package includes an a unique 19 inch wheel. Uh, however, you used to have to be able, you used to have to get the Autobahn to get the 19s. This car also includes larger brakes, 13.4 inch rotors in the front with a single pot red painted caliper. It's a smaller 12 inch rotor at the back. The Autobahn also includes adaptive dampers. You can adjust the damping rate by up to 15 different settings in the custom setting, but you can now get that adjustable suspension if you guys go for the 40th anniversary model. It was typically reserved for the Autobahn, but that's a limited production spec. A car. Now, in terms of the ground clearance, VW says this has around 4.7 inches. So again, you're not gonna be tearing up the tarmac in this vehicle. The Golf R is the one that gives you all-wheel drive and it has roughly the same ground clearance. Uh, you can see my tester also has the panoramic glass roof, which it's technically the size of just a standard sunroof, but it has a bigger piece of glass. I like the way it looks when it opens. You can see there's integrated turn signal mirrors, body colored mirrors as well. VW also offers black mirrors and a black roof if you guys go for the anniversary edition uh, model. You can see the rear of the vehicle has a really interesting look to it, especially when you look at the uh, taillights, which are full LED. You can see you have an LED turn signal, LED brake lights, LED reverse lights, which is nice. And then you also have just clean badging, a Volkswagen logo here, which the backup camera lives underneath there, GTI badging. And then you can see nice dual outlet exhaust with chrome tips. Now I will say this press car has around 3000 miles on it. I cleaned off the exhaust earlier, but that's what it looks like after 3000 miles. If you don't keep it clean, that's gonna definitely show that exhaust soot that's very common with these German vehicles. There's also a very subtle rear lip spoiler, a rear hatch spoiler here. The Golf R is gonna have the bigger wing, which I really like. At least, at least VW still gives you a rear uh, wiper, which is nice. Some brands are taking that away. Now, being this car is very small on the outside, uh, it is still relatively practical. Although, if you guys really want space, you're gonna wanna buy an SUV because VW says you get around 19.9 cubic feet of storage space back here, which is fine. This is like the same as what you'd find in some mid-sized sedans, but, or maybe a little bit more. You can see underneath here, VW gives you uh, a temporary spare tire so you don't have to deal with a fix of flat. There's a little bit of underfloor storage underneath here uh, as well. And then if you wanna fold down those seats, it expands the cargo out to around 34 and a half cubic feet, which is fine, but just keep in mind, you're gonna get around 10 more cubic feet of storage space in something like the Honda Civic hatchback, which technically Honda doesn't offer uh, the SI in the hatchback configuration. But overall, it's still a relatively practical vehicle. Just know that it's not going to be as practical, of course, as an SUV. So let's go ahead and take a look at the interior of this 2023 Volkswagen GTI with the Autobahn package. Now, before we get into the vehicle, I want to show you guys the key fob. You can see this is the newer key fob that I've seen other VW products have, like the ID4. I really like this fob, actually. It feels heavy. It feels well made. I also like the piano black plastic with the chrome. It has your unlock, lock, and open up the trunk button, and also has a panic feature. No remote start from this fob, although remember, this is a manual, so you're not going to be able to remote start it anyways, but I believe the DSG does and have remote start either. Now, as I approach the vehicle, you can see this has an, uh, an automatic lock function and unlock function. So as I approach the vehicle with the fob, it unlocked the doors automatically. There's actually an LED light behind this door handle if you guys go for the SE and up trims. Uh, and then the mirrors, sadly, they do not power fold, which would have been nice, but it's a very traditional door handle. Just pull that, you can see uh, the door opens up for you. 
Uh, and when you're when you open up the door, you're greeted with this plaid cloth interior. Now, this is not the interior that the Autobahn is supposed to have. You're supposed to have the full leather seats, which are heated and ventilated, and you also have full power with two-person memory. My tester, because it is lacking some features, uh, or Volkswagen gave us like a $1,200 credit because of supply chain issues, because of the, the chip shortage. Uh, so instead, we have the seats from the SE trim, which are cloth which only have a power recline function. Everything else is manual. You still have a heated seat here for the driver and a heated steering wheel. Uh, but again, this is not the seat that the Autobahn package is supposed to give you. It's supposed to give you the full leather. In terms of the door panel, you can see uh, there's soft touch injection molded plastic here on this upper portion, a metal accented door handle, this interesting kind of plastic look carbon fiber tr look trim with hexagons kind of patterned into the actual plastic, which looks interesting, padded over here, Alcantara on this portion. And then here you can see there's even like a mouse fur fabric, but it is all hard touch plastic down here. The Autobahn package also includes the a nine speaker Harman Kardon stereo, which sounds pretty good. I'm impressed. It's a really decent sound system. You have to go for the upper trims to get that feature. Uh, but overall, it's a pretty inviting looking cabin at a first glance when you get inside. Now getting inside, you can see you do have to fall into the vehicle because it has only 4.7 inches of ground clearance as I get in and shut the door. The door has a nice solid sounding thunk, which adds to the impression of quality. And you can see here, uh, if you guys have been inside the ID4, uh, you definitely notice the extra tech this car has. You have a larger 10 inch display here on the upper trims. All of them come standard with the 10.25 inch uh, digital cockpit display. Uh, but uh, the baser trims, the S and the 40th will have an eight inch screen here versus the 10 inch screen here. Now the start stop button is down here. Uh, it's a manual, so you gotta make sure it's in neutral and put the clutch in. You can see the engine starts right up and it has the typical Volkswagen chime. Uh, and then you have the center screen here, which includes uh, wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, uh, which is nice. And that screen, you can see, you can kind of change the lighting in that screen, which makes it look pretty good. I have it set to the red right now. Uh, and then you also have a lot of piano black plastic. This is gonna show a lot of fingerprints annoyingly, uh, but uh, you can see here, it definitely feels a lot more modern versus the Mark 7. Now, in terms of materials, you can see soft touch injection molded plastic on the upper portion of the dash. You have that same faux textured plastic that tries to imitate carbon fiber. You have uh, vents down here that looks like it's a continuous piece, but it's actually three separate vents. Uh, and then the Autobahn package also includes a heads up display, which you can customize a little bit to show different functions. The steering wheel itself also is nice. It's a flat bottom design. It's a heated wheel and it's also tilt and telescoping manually, which offers a good amount of adjustability uh, and range. Uh, I can get kind of pretty comfortable relatively easily. What I don't like about this car are the touch sensitive buttons. You can see lots of touch sensitive buttons, uh, which are a little bit finicky to use. There's actually three levels to the heated steering wheel, which you kind of have to continuously hit. I find myself accidentally touching that so many times while I'm driving. Your dri IQ drive controls are over here, the horn. Sounds good, actually. It doesn't sound puny. It actually sounds like it says, get out of my way. Uh, I like the badging with the GTI here with the red accents. It definitely shows that it's a special steering wheel, which is uh, which is nice. Uh, the instrument panel here, you can kind of adjust the way this looks as well. Uh, by pushing this view button, you can kind of change this to be a traditional two dial. You can also change it to have it look uh, with a map display. And uh, you can also show your driver assistance information and all that stuff. Uh, and then you can do the center tack display, which is kind of what the GTI is the signature uh, look for the GTI uh, in terms of the instrument panel. And you, I know you guys are probably noticing this, the check engine light is on. Seriously, I don't know why it came on. It just came on literally while I was in the middle of filming this vehicle. When I did the driving scene, no check engine light. I've had the car for a few days, no check engine light. It just decided to turn itself on, but it idles just fine. And I don't know why. I haven't put uh, any extra gas in it just yet. So I'm just like, I don't know why it's on. Uh, not entirely sure what the deal is that with that, uh, but it's a Volkswagen, so I'll let you guys leave your comments there. Now, uh, over here, you can see the uh, wireless phone charging pad is nice. It fits my iPhone 14 Pro Max pretty nicely. This right here has definitely been a point of arguments with a lot of enthusiasts because this is their Discover Pro 10-inch infotainment system with wireless CarPlay and Android Auto. Uh, it has a home button over here, dedicated embedded GPS, which is nice. Uh, uh, the screen itself is relatively beautiful in terms of the graphics. In fact, I like how this looks when I start using it, but you can see it's a little bit laggy and slow at times. And right now, for some reason, my phone is not connecting to CarPlay, which it was earlier. Not sure why it's not connecting. It's almost like the car knows I'm filming right now. There it goes. It's now connected to the CarPlay. You can see my phone is connected and it also is wirelessly charging. This looks fantastic. 
uh, when I have it in the CarPlay screen, you can see right there, it froze. It took a second for it to, to show. So really hope that VW improves the software. This is the same crap that I'm also not a fan of in the Volkswagen ID4, but it's a shame because it looks beautiful. You have touch controls here for your automatic temperature control uh, where you can adjust the the actual climate. There's actually three zone temperature in the Autobahn package. There's a separate zone for the rear, which is very impressive. Uh, pushing this climate button here, you can see this is how you turn on the climate control. You can actually talk to the system and tell it like, you know, things like my hands are cold, it'll turn on the heated steering wheel or my feet are cold, it'll it'll do that function for you. You can also adjust the rear from here because this is the only car in the segment that has rear uh, climate control settings on its own. You push the heated seat control there, you can see this is how you adjust the heated seat, touch sensitive control, but I don't like how it's a two-step process. I just want to be able to touch that and have it turn on the heated seat. But again, it's like that because this car is supposed to have ventilated seats, which would eventually, which would basically just put it next to that. Uh, but my tester is missing that feature because of hello, the chip shortage. Uh, you can also adjust the ambient lighting color. You can see I can change that to be uh, orange, green, blue, red, or yellow. And I can also do a custom setting. I actually really like the red for this car, but also the green also looks pretty cool. You can see it changes the gauge display and it also changes the ambient lighting in here, which is nice. Your drive mode selector is right here. You can see there's an eco comfort sport and then a custom setting. The custom setting allows you to literally adjust the dampings by like up to 15 different settings. So that's a very, very cool, very German how it's so customizable. It's a little overwhelming at times, but hey, I like how they offer that. When I put the car into reverse, you can see there's your backup camera with trajectory uh, and parking sensors front and rear. No 360 camera, but you do have an automatic parallel parking feature, uh, which is pretty cool, especially on a car with a manual transmission. Not really sure I would use it. The assist function here, you can adjust the IQ drive, the driver assistance functions by going into there. You can kind of customize that. This car does have adaptive cruise, but not stop and go. It takes that away when you get with the manual transmission. Uh, there is an electronic parking brake here, uh, which is not gonna be ideal for you enthusiasts who wanna do those J turns. Uh, the shifter itself, you can see it's got that golf ball texture, which is nice. It's got relatively long throws, but they are precise. Reverse is accessed by pushing down and going all the way over to the left. Uh, and that's how you access reverse. The clutch also is longer travel. It engages right at the end of the travel. I do like the aluminum pedals, uh, which is nice. You have cup holders right here, which you can actually push this button and kind of create another cup holder. There's two of them, or you can kind of make that go away to give you some storage. Padded center console armrest, which open this up, you can see there's a pretty shallow storage area. Uh, your USB ports are over here. There's two USB-C ports. The uh, armrest does allow you to slide and adjust, which is nice. Uh, definitely feels nice and padded there. It's comfortable. Uh, the seats are also comfortable and supportive, even though these are not the Autobahn specific seats. They are great looking. I love the plaid. So hey, if you guys want an Autobahn with plaid or with the plaid seats, this could be a car that you could try to find on a dealer lot that's lacking that feature. You can see open it up. It's a bin style glove compartment that's damped, but not lined with felt. It's a pretty good size. And then you can see there's LED map lighting in here. Uh, there's uh, a sunroof here that allows you to open up or you can also close the manual shade. It, it looks like a regular sunroof, but VW calls it a panel roof. So overall, the interior is still very nice. Aside from just the software glitches with the infotainment system, which could or could not be a deal breaker for some of you, it definitely has the room and the comfort and the tech that I expect uh, at this price point. Let's go ahead and hop into the back seat of this car because the GTI is now only available with four doors. So the two door has been discontinued, uh, which is a good thing. This is what technically sells here in America. There's around 35 inches of legroom back here, uh, which is fine. It's a little bit more versus the GR Corolla or the Corolla hatchback, but less than versus what the Honda Civic uh, gives you. As I get it into the door, the door has the same solid sounding thunk. And unlike the front seats, there is hard touch plastic back here, but you do have an aluminum accented door handle and it's padded over here with the Alcantara that still kind of carries over. You can see there's some nice storage here in the seat back pockets. In fact, there's actually two storage pockets here on the upper portion where you can put your cell phone, which is nice, or kids might put like food in there and it might melt if you forget about it, which would be gross. Uh, I like how VW gives you rear seat air vents, even on the base trim. However, the Autobahn package includes heated rear seats, which is definitely nice, although this is locked out right now. And I can also adjust my own climate control, which is the only vehicle I believe in the segment that has tri-zone climate. Uh, the seats themselves, comfortable, uh, supportive, nice looking. Uh, legroom is fine, but there's a large hump here, which is funny because this is a front drive vehicle. Uh, this is why I have the seat to drive. So I can cross my legs back here and be somewhat comfortable, but taller friends may find this to be a little bit more constraining. Uh, fold this down, you can see there's an armrest with two cup holders, and then you can also fold down, I believe this, to give you an actual pass through into the cargo area. You can fold the seats entirely uh, yourself if you'd like. There's also LED map lighting back here, uh, which is nice, but overall the back seat is 
still a little bit small. Like it's fine if you guys have shorter friends or you don't have kids, but I imagine with kids and the relatively small size of the hatch, you're gonna be looking toward an SUV if you really need an actual family vehicle. So here we are back in the quintessential hot hatch. I actually haven't had a chance to drive this car uh, for almost a year. When I first drove the Mark 8 here in the US, it was almost a year ago, it was only on the media drive. So now that I finally have the GTI for a full week, this car is now celebrating its 40th anniversary here in the US. And Volkswagen, of course, is celebrating that with a 40th anniversary special trim, which essentially gives us the adaptive dampers and the 19 inch wheels from this trim, although a different style wheel, but we are in an Autobahn package, which has the seats downgraded to the SE trim. So we're missing the ventilated seats with the leather and the power, full power adjustment with the memory. But regardless, this car, has always been the hot hatch that enthusiasts go after. It's an easy car to recommend if you guys are looking for a performance vehicle that can basically do it all with front wheel drive and of course with a manual transmission. So let's go ahead and test out this car and see what it's like to live in the real world. Um, now I've actually, uh, I haven't daily, or I haven't zero to 60 tested the Mark 8 with the manual just yet. Um, and we're gonna see what we can get here. Now, the, the, that temperature outside is around 50 degrees. We are on summer tires. Um, the road is thankfully dry. Uh, it did rain uh, last night, but the sun has come out and it's dried up the road. Now, this car is still front wheel drive with a limited slip diff, an electronic limited slip diff. So I've, I've switched the stability control into its uh, sports setting, which you do via in the screen. Let's see what we can get zero to 60 wise. We'll... Oof. <laughs> You can see it's struggling to put the power down because of how wet the road is, but you know what? We got 6.25 seconds there. We'll try again on another portion to see if we can get a little more uh, traction out of these tires, but 6.25 is respectable. Uh, I've seen outlets like Car and Driver do like six and a half. The dual clutch will do it in as quick as like five and a half seconds. So just keep that in mind. Remember, this is still a front wheel drive car. It has trouble putting the power down. Thankfully, no torque steer, but it did have, as you guys heard, a good amount of wheel hop, uh, which is pretty normal. But the whole point of having that limited slip div is being able to kind of turn into the corners and just put your foot down and this thing will automatically just appropriate power to the wheels with uh, which have the best grip but let's see what we can do on this little stretch here it's still gonna probably have trouble launching i'm not gonna i'm not gonna dump the clutch quite as hard though oh god it's really having trouble putting the power down but you can hit 60 in second gear in this car, which is not something that you can do in the Integra and the Civic Si. So the gearing is a little bit longer in this car, which is good for zero to 60 performance, but 6.7 on that run there where it's slightly more uphill. Uh, again, I, I'm confident this car could get closer to the six second mark if we can just get some heat into these tires um, and it, wish it wasn't so cold out. But the beauty about the GTI is the fact that this thing handles like it's on rails. It's got a uh, 15% stiffer chassis than the old Mark 7. This model here has the adaptive dampers. I have it set in its sports setting and it's definitely uh, feeling a little bit stiffer. The beauty about this car, however, is you can go into the mode here and you can go to custom and you can literally adjust the suspension exactly how you'd like, which it won't let me do right now because I'm driving. But that portion where I can continuously change the dampers, I think it's 15 different settings is what BW says, uh, makes this car super customizable. It's very German and the Germans, they like to you know allow you to change so many settings depending on how you'd like it to be but the steering in this car is incredibly sharp. The chassis feels firm and stiff. It feels like a driver's car, and that's the beauty about this vehicle. In fact, just like the Golf R, which I had a chance to spend a week with as well, the Golf R also felt very much like a driver's car. The GTI has always been uh, just, you know, that car one notch below the Golf R, but it's just so much more affordable than the Golf R. Put my foot down here, you can feel. <laughs> it's letting me put the power down, although that stability control is really just cutting everything, which is annoying. Um, but overall, I like this car's feel. I like the manual transmission. I like the sound that it makes. I like the feel of the chassis and the steering and the brakes and the throttle response. And oh, it actually made a little pop there from the exhaust. That's very nice. Wasn't expecting that. Uh, but let's try it again really quick here, see what we can get. I'll try a little bit less aggressive of a clutch dump. Oh, come on, put the power down. There we go. Chirping into second gear. 6.06 .06 seconds there, so 
Not bad. I, I'm confident you could probably get under six if you could just get the launch right. That's the problem with front wheel drive is they have so many limitations when you have this much power and this much torque going to the front wheels. You just can't put that power down, which is a shame because this car, it feels quick. The one thing about this car is it's really tunable. Put my foot down there, it's putting that power down nice. Oh God, wheel hop for days. <laughs> but this thing still puts a smile on my face. I mean, I drive a lot of quick cars in my time of literally doing these videos for you guys. And you don't necessarily need to have a car that can do zero to 60 in three seconds to have fun. This car still puts a smile on my face. I love the manual transmission. I love how engaging it feels. I love the sounds. I love the visceral feeling that I get. I love the seats. Also, these are the uh, plaid seats, the cloth, which this car is not supposed to get, but because of the chip shortage and everything, it's been decontented and it saves you $1,200. But they hold you in place nicely. They're comfortable and supportive. I, can, I have great visibility all around, great sight lines. Oh, lots of torque there. Oh, you can hear that cracks from the burbles from the exhaust. I like the farting noises. I wasn't expecting that. So Volkswagen really is trying hard here to make this car even more of a driver's car, make it feel even more visceral. <laughs> I like that. Now, should you go with the manual or the DSG? That's totally up to you. The manual is a good transmission, but I like the uh, dual clutch a lot. The one thing I wish that this car had was active rev matching. Uh, Volkswagen does not offer active rev matching on the GTI with the stick. That's something that I would like to see them have. The Elantra N and the Civic Si offer those features and I think it's just a really important uh, feature to have. So hopefully Volkswagen eventually offers it later on. But uh, let me switch the stability control off here completely. And uh, let me see what I can do on this particular stretch here. Ooh, lots of wheel hop. Oh God. <laughs> 6.07 seconds there. So again, still having trouble putting the power down. We'll turn the nannies back on because literally it likes to spin the tires a lot when you have the stability control completely off. But hey, it, it's fun. It's what makes this car such a joy around the corners and even around tight turns like this, you can put your foot down, just plant the throttle and it just puts the power down. Lovely shifter, a little bit longer throws than I would like. The clutch is also light. It engages right toward the end of the travel. And then if you want, you can put this car into a comfort setting here. And you'll notice that the suspension quiets down, the exhaust gets a little bit quieter, or it softens the suspension. The steering gets a lot lighter, but it's still very quick and direct. Not much road feel. Uh, in sport mode, it gets heavier, but it mostly just transmits more heft. Um, and then this car still comes with Volkswagen's IQ Drive, which has their adaptive cruise, although you lose the stop and go capability when you go with the manual. So if you put the, put the clutch in, change gears, it'll, it'll continuously apply throttle and maintain distance and maintain your speed and slow down, but it won't come down to a full stop because hello, it's a manual. You're not gonna get that. So if you want that, get the dual clutch, you'll get the stop and go feature. But in terms of fuel economy and my week's worth of testing, this car is rated to get 2332. I was easily able to get 34, 35 MPG on the highway, which is fantastic. Uh, this car in the city does around 23 MPG, 22, which is pretty much bang on what the EPA says. Thankfully, it's just rated to run on regular gas, which is fantastic. Uh, it was showing around 380 miles on a full tank when they dropped it off. So great MPG, love, love how it runs on regular gas, comfortable car. It's still such a joy to drive, yet it's so easy to drive as well when you just want to take this to work and back, when you want to take it on a longer trip. So clearly Volkswagen has the hot hatch recipe perfected. And really the only thing that's kind of annoying about this car is the infotainment system, the touch sensitive controls, the touch, you know, the slider controls here for the center screen are kind of annoying. But other than that, once you get past that, this is a phenomenal driver's car uh, that will seriously put a smile on your face every day. Now, as a previous owner of a Mark 6 GTI about 10 years ago, I have to say, after spending some time living with the Mark 8 GTI, this is very much still the quintessential hot hatch in my mind. If you guys have owned GTIs in the past, you're gonna get into this car and you're gonna feel right at home. The two liter turbo engine has more power this year. It delivers pretty similar amounts of acceleration as the Mark 7 GTI, but I love what Volkswagen has done with the sound and the visceral feel. I think the chassis feels better. I love the adaptive dampers. You can really control the ride quality. 
And the shifter has that typical VW feel where it's a little bit longish in its, in its throws, but it's very precise. It's just a really easy car to live with and drive on a daily basis. In terms of performance, zero to 60 in around six seconds with the six speed manual is acceptable. Uh, obviously, we've kind of pushed our expectations a little bit further with these higher performance hot hatches like the Hyundai Elantra N. If you guys want a quicker one, I recommend going with the dual clutch model. You can't really go wrong. Personally, for me, uh, maybe it's just me getting older. I probably would actually just get this car with the dual clutch myself because I'm just getting older. I don't feel like driving a stick shift all the time, especially if you guys deal with uh, rush hour traffic on a daily basis. In terms of practicality, this car offers enough space for probably a single guy or a single gal and maybe just a uh, uh, you know, a spouse. If you have kids, this is going to definitely feel a little bit too small. You're going to want to go to an SUV, obviously, if you have children and you're going to want that all wheel drive grip. The infotainment software in this car is still probably the biggest annoyance. And it's such a shame because the rest of the car is fantastic. Uh, it drives amazing. It's, it feels really great. It looks great. It's practical. But the software behind the infotainment system just needs work. I'm not entirely sure it's a deal breaker because uh, you can kind of get around it by just using the wireless car player and auto feature. But I really hope that VW does some kind of a quick refresh to address the software concerns. I did get a chance to see the Volkswagen ID which apparently has an all new software within its infotainment system. So hopefully that's been much improved or VW can kind of implement it on all their models uh, with a quick over the air update. Uh, and in terms of you know pricing for this car, if you're looking to get your hands on a GTI, this is definitely going to be on the higher end of the scale in terms of the segment, because this car starts at just over $30,000 for 2023. They, they increased the price by like $800 compared to the 2022 model, which used to start at under $30,000 for the base S. Now I will say that this car is very well equipped at the base end, but there's a lot of stuff that the Autobahn package gives you that I personally would want myself if I was gonna live with this car. Most of you are probably gonna go to the SE trim, which is around uh, $34,000 for the SE. That 40th anniversary model uh, is basically an S, but it includes the 19 inch wheels and the adaptive dampers. From this trim, that's going to cost around $33,000. The Autobahn package uh, goes for around $39,000. Now, my tester uh, gives you about a $1,200 credit because it removes the uh, ventilated and leather seats, which are full power with memory. I personally want that feature, so I would happily pay the $1,200 back, but because of the chip shortage and production constraints, that's the reason why this particular one here has that missing. So hey, it's a unique car if you guys want the plaid seats, but you want the Autobahn package, but at around $38,700 as equipped, my tester with the King's Red Metallic and the uh, $1,200 destination charge. It is, again, about 10 grand more expensive versus something like a Honda Civic Si. You could also go for something like an Acura Integra, A-spec with the manual transmission and the tech package that's will set, set you back around 36. It's around two grand less than this car, but the VW does have more power and more torque, and it's also uh, a traditional hatch. The Integra is a hatchback, but it has more uh, like looks of a sedan, but I will say compared to the Integra, this actually has a little bit nicer features like the tri-zone climate and the heated rear seats and the rear seat air vents, which you can't even get on the Integra, which is actually kind of confusing considering the fact that it's an Acura. So overall, I think the GTI is still a strong value, especially if you guys can keep the options in check. But at the higher end, this one here closer to 40 grand puts you a little bit closer to Civic Type R and Volkswagen Golf R territory, which personally for me, I'd probably make that jump. Or there's also the Toyota GR Corolla, which starts at around 37 grand, but good luck finding one of those, especially a sticker. These I can I imagine you can probably find at dealerships for sticker or less. So kind of keep that in mind if you guys are in the market for a hot hatch. But with all that said, hope you guys have enjoyed my full overview on the 2023 Volkswagen GTI with the Autobahn package. If you're also looking to see the latest cars I'm testing, be sure to follow me on Instagram at redline underscore reviews, like us on Facebook, and as always, guys, please keep subscribing to the Redline Reviews YouTube channel for all the latest reviews. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you all in the next video.